Good morning, everyone. Before we begin the liturgy today, just a couple of uh, preliminary things. The first is really directed towards the folks who are watching online. For the last 15 months, any of you who have been a part of the live stream masses know that there's a lot of prayers that are added and a lot of uh, information that is contributed to the live stream mass, and that's done by David Dusek. Uh, David has been instrumental in keeping the quality of our online masses available. I'm sad to say that David's wife, Kathy, died last night unexpectedly and suddenly, and so our prayers go out to him. Uh, obviously, today we are going to just continue to offer those prayers, but for those of you at home who are watching this mass online, you might see that things look a little differently uh, because a lot of those prayers aren't there. That's because uh, Dave's doing what he needs to be doing right now today. Secondly, in light of the uh, changes in the protocols for Mass that have been happening. We're starting to open up some more things, so we've been adding more music as the protocols have allowed us to do so. So starting now, we will be having more music at church. Please stand then for our opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear friends, let us call to mind our sin, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered in one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocaust and sacrifices young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord.
Our reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through eternal spirit offered himself an unblemished to God, cleanse our consciousness from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is a mediator of the new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. And then he said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. They all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Communion is the real presence of Jesus Christ. Now this is the feast, the body and blood of the Lord. Many of you knew it as Corpus Christi. But this feast commemorates in a very special way the focus on what we do every time we come to Mass, to receive Jesus Christ, body and blood, soul and divinity. This is Christ who we receive in Holy Communion. It is the real presence. It is Jesus who we receive. We have to remind ourselves, how do we know this? And we understand it through the Gospels themselves. 
through the accounts of the Last Supper, we just heard one of them, how Jesus took the bread and took the wine. And he defines what it is. He tells us what it is. This was handed on immediately from the early Christians to those who wrote those texts. Christ himself explains it's not bread and wine anymore. This is my body. This is my blood. That Jesus, who defines what Holy Communion is, then secondly gives us a commandment to take and eat and take and drink. This is not a kind suggestion when we can get around to it. This is a commandment of the Lord to receive him. A commandment of the Lord to encounter him. Jesus defines it. Jesus commands it. And we put it into practice because we are disciples of Jesus. We follow Jesus. And to say we follow Jesus means we do what he tells us. And receiving him in Holy Communion is essential. All right, so much for the theology. Let me tell you what I've learned in the last 15 months in light of the pandemic about Holy Communion. Three things in particular that really came to light as we've been working our way through the coronavirus. First is this. The Eucharist is precious. It is such an incredible gift. And I know that in two ways, two experiential ways that I discovered over these last months while we've been dealing with this. The first was when we had lockdown. 77 days, I was in this church all by myself. I'm on one side of the altar, that iPhone is on the other side, and I am holding the Eucharist in my hands. I am holding it. And what an incredibly surreal experience it is to offer Mass all alone. No one in here. This beautiful, vast cathedral, and I'm the only person in it, sharing it through the online Masses. But to suddenly realize the privilege I have, the gift I have, to hold his body in my hands. And like all those other priests around the globe who were in churches by themselves, and to say, okay, Lord, help me to keep vigil with you and thank you for the gift you've given me. Never would have understood that before the pandemic. The precious gift of Eucharist. But then I saw it on the other side. Because about a year ago, we ended the lockdown. And about a year ago, people were able to start coming in. You might have recalled, first it was just a communion service. You came outside, you had your hands sanitized, we spread people way out, they got communion, and they went out the doors. It was quick. And yet after 11 weeks without it, I was giving communion to people with tears in their eyes because of the ache in their heart at what they had missed because they knew that there was something missing from their life, something precious in their life, something they longed for, hungered for. And as I gave them communion again, to see that in their faces reminded me that what I had been privileged to hold, they were now privileged to receive. The Eucharist is a precious gift from God. I understand that now in a whole new way. But second, it's essential nourishment for our souls. Jesus defines it, Jesus commands it, and we need Jesus. That there's so many things that can derail us, so many things that can distract us, so many things that can get us off our game. And when we are tempted, distracted, frustrated, upset, doubtful, worried, afraid, how much more we need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, feed me. We know practically if we eat wholesome food, it's good for our body. We know if we eat junk food, it's all going to go south. We know that the nourishment our body needs gives us insight into what our soul needs. And Christ comes to us to say, let me feed you, let me nourish you, let me help you. This is the best food we got to strengthen our souls for whatever this world throws at us. And for many people, the last 15 months have thrown a lot at them. And for a lot of people, that hunger for Eucharist, that need for Eucharist has been heightened. And for many, not being able to receive it has pointed that out. We need to be close to Jesus. And the Eucharist gives us a powerful way to commune with the Lord, to become a living tabernacle where he dwells in us. The Eucharist is a precious gift. 
But the Eucharist is an essential element for our spiritual life. Besides those two things, there was one more that really came to light. And that's the Eucharist becomes an essential habit. There's a reason why the church in its wisdom says every Sunday, the day of the resurrection, or Saturday night if we enter the vigil, every week we come near because we need the regular discipline, the regular habit, the regular structure. Because just to have good food once does not a healthy person make. And just to have Holy Communion once does not keep our soul on track. But it's the regular, disciplined, steadfast approach to the altar that strengthens us, heals us, nourishes us. You know, we know this. Again, with body and soul, right? Anybody who's ever said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to work out. I'm going, to, I'm going to take my fitness seriously. I'm going to do some exercises. And they get into a routine. They get into a good habit, a good structure of fitness. And then because life can happen, things can turn on a dime, they get out of their habits. And after a few weeks, they say, you know, I really got to get back. I got to start working out again. And then they go, oh, this is hard. Uh. The very thing that they used to do now is like pulling teeth. You see, it's interesting about habits. Good habits build virtue, strength, wholeness. Bad habits lead to vice, a downward spiral of destruction. And we know that, given what the pandemic did, given what 77 days of lockdown did, given what all of these protocols and concerns, vaccinated, masks, hand sanitizer, pick your poison, all, with all of that, it's easy to get out of the habit, the healthy habit of weekly communion. It's easy to suddenly, ah, I'll, just, I'll just watch it on TV. Ah, I'll, just, oh, I'll say a prayer somewhere else. The habit that the church gives us at the commandment of Jesus who defines what we receive, becomes essential for the long-term health of our souls. I learned during this pandemic how precious the gift is in a way that seminary never could have taught me. I learned how essential it is for our soul by what happens when we don't receive it. And I learned how crucial it is for the weekly habit because that habit keeps us on track in the ups and downs of life. Folks, today we draw near to the altar again. Today, we bring whatever we've got in this world, and the world is always going to be throwing stuff at us. And we receive Jesus Christ, body and blood, soul and divinity, His real presence, so that His body in our body empowers us to live our lives in the world for Him. We are His disciples. We do what he commands. We live for him. And through receiving Holy Communion, we receive the strength we need to carry it out. God bless you all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became men. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray this day for the church, the body of Christ, that we will deepen our devotion to the Eucharistic sacrifice, which gives life to the world. We pray to the Lord that the redemptive power of Christ's Eucharistic sacrifice will transform the hearts and minds of all those who lead us in this life. We pray to the Lord that Christians will give gospel witness to what they receive in the most holy Eucharist. We pray to the Lord that the real presence of Jesus Christ will be better known and loved by people everywhere. We pray to the Lord for the grace this week to adore the presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. We pray to the Lord for an end to COVID-19 and the pandemic. We pray to the Lord for the intention of this Mass, Dom and Pat Mozelli. We pray to the Lord for the prayers that all of you have offered at home for 15 months, some of you, for the prayers that you so faithfully offer, for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim. 
commanding us to make this offering as his memorial, as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. 
In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress and useless worry, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Some announcements. I am pleased to announce that this Friday, Father Joji, our new cluster associate, will be joining us. He'll be moving into the rectory at St. Anthony's Church Friday afternoon. So starting this coming weekend, you will see him at some of the area masses. We'll start to cycle him through uh, here at Cathedral, but also at St. Anthony's, St. William, Holy Assumption, and St. Anthony Lake Nebagaman. So in the weeks to come, uh, you'll be getting a chance to see him. When you do, please reach out to him, greet him, get to know him. Uh, I'll put more in the bulletin next week about that, but looking forward to having him here with us. It's been 15 months uh, since Father Ina left us, and I'll, I can admit I'm, I'm really excited to have a colleague again, and deeply grateful to Father Ron and Father Lee. Without their help, there would not have been masses in all of the parishes every weekend. Profound thanks to those two fine priests in their 80s who are serving Jesus. Speaking of a fine priest serving Jesus, Father Lee, this Thursday, June 10th, will celebrate his 60th anniversary of priestly ordination. He's gonna have the mass here on Thursday. He'll be saying that mass and he'll preach and preside. And then afterwards, there will be cake and coffee downstairs for anybody who wants to come. And if you know Father Lee, he does like his cake and coffee and sugar, so. But that may, that's open invitation. Anybody who'd like to come to daily mass, certainly welcome to do so. Celebrate with him. Uh, and for those of you watching online, that'll be available. I want to say a word of thanks to those of you from the Cathedral and Holy Assumption parishes, uh, helping towards the new road that we're building out at Calvary Cemetery on the far south side of the cemetery. A lot of work needs to be done in order for us to continue to make that cemetery available and expand accordingly. We're about 30% of the way there, so for those of you who've made a gift, thank you. For those who haven't, please prayerfully consider one. It's an important work. It's one of those things you kind of got to do if we're going to continue to serve our people. So if you can do that, please feel free to just make the gift. You can get it to the parish office, drop it in the mail or the collection basket. For those of you who here at the cathedral who are interested in Eucharistic adoration, we're looking to do this on Thursdays from one to three o'clock in the afternoon. But what I need is a list of people, their names and phone numbers who are interested. I got about 14 names on that list right now, last time I checked. I'd like to get that past 20. It just is important that we have enough people coming into the church to pray for those couple hours. If that's something that you are open to, uh, would like to, to be a part of, please get your name and phone number down in the back of the church. It's the sign up. And again, uh, just looking to make sure, double check folks, the ministries are set through the summer. We've added a, a second Eucharistic minister uh, and also between that and the lectors. I wanna make sure that those of you who are interested in doing those ministries, please sign up in the priest sacristy. Starting a little late summer, we're going to send out some information and we'll start to, to do it as a, a mailing again where people get scheduled. But right now, we're just making sure we've got them all filled in. Now, this is the first weekend where the dispensation from Mass has been lifted from the diocese. And a lot of people are finding their way back, coming to church. Questions about COVID. Questions about safety. Maybe they've been out of the habit. Maybe they're just wondering and have some questions, concerns. Everybody's got to find their way back. But I have two distinctly different issues here. First, for those of you out there in church, you're my ambassadors to welcome people back to church. I can guarantee that we're going to have enough hand sanitizer that you can shower in for the foreseeable future. I can guarantee that, you know, we're going to take all the appropriate steps to use good common sense. That's an important thing for Bishop Powers. But I know this, when people stop going to church, one of the common things they will often say is that, you know, they stop going and nobody ever said anything. No one ever invited me back. 
somebody should probably invite them. I'm asking all of us to be that somebody to the people we know. People will make their own decisions. People need to make their own decisions. But it would be helpful that somebody personally said to them, love to have you back at church. Love to see you come. For those of you out there, please be that somebody to the people you know and love. And then to you at home. Again, for some of you, it's been 15 months. You've been looking at my mugshot. And the thing is, for some people, you, I know that they couldn't get to church. It's, it's impossible. I get that. We're not going to quit these. This is going to continue. But I do want to make a heartfelt appeal to those of you at home who've been kind of working your way through this. On behalf of all of your parishes, wherever you are, I'd like to invite you back. I'd like to personally invite you to come back to church. Please note that if you've got some real concerns, try a daily Mass. This cathedral seats a thousand people. We get about 30 people at a daily Mass. You can socially distance at a daily Mass. But on behalf of all of us, for those of you at home, please consider coming back. We'd love to have you. I mentioned that Kathy Dusek had died at the beginning of Mass today, and I, I just will note that we have no funeral arrangements for her. However, there is one, and we will pray for her at all of the Masses next week, but I do note that there is one other funeral announcement this week, and that's for Leo Tapel. The funeral for Leo Tapel will be this Wednesday at St. Anthony Church in Lake Nebagaman for the repose of the soul of Leo Tapel. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.